Okay, let's look at our process so far. We started with this demo with the concept of dynamic clouds and soaring flight. I made a, a hand-drawn sketch playing with three approaches. One was symmetrical, but ended up doing kind of a dynamic one on top of the symmetrical. One that plays with negative and positive space, having kind of the, the empty space around these cloud forms be suggestive of a bird in flight and then overlapping with a moon cutout. Here's another one where it uses the moon clouds in a bird shape. That's a little dynamic as well. And then clean them up in Photoshop and cleaned this up to be a purely symmetrical sketch just by copying one half and flipping it onto the other half. And it gave me this. And then I used Photoshop and just filled in some areas roughly with black. Remember that sketches don't need to be perfectly clean, but it's good to know what your shapes are because you don't want a logo that's just outline. And I decided that this one was the most successful, you know, had the most potential. Brought that into Illustrator, brought it into Vector, tried to figure out ways to trace that vector shape, and ultimately saved it in three formats. As an AI format, which stands for Adobe Illustrator, as an EPS format, which allows it to be transferred between raster and vector programs. So this is the most important format. And then an SVG format, which is a standard vector format, which allows for it to be uh, brought into vector.com and worked on there. So just like Photop and Photoshop, you can work between the two. You can work theoretically between Adobe Illustrator and vector.com as long as you save it as an SVG. But the EPS is the one that you all want to be able to save it as. So even if you create a vector.com SVG, you want to bring that into the lab where we have Illustrator, open it, and then save it as an EPS. Because when we go now to <laughs> a raster file or raster program like Photoshop or Photo P, opening up Photoshop now, we can bring that EPS in as a smart object layer that we never rasterize, which means just like a vector shape within Photoshop, it means it can be scaled to any size and never lose quality. And then like we've played with a little bit before, we can use layer styles to change its color, to give it a gradient, to give it a texture, to give it a drop shadow, to give it an outline stroke. And in this way, we're gonna get variations on our original black shape logo. And those variations, that's the third requirement for this assignment four. So the first requirement is a sketch. Second requirement is a black shaped logo, saved and uploaded as a PNG, so it will be transparent. And then the third is some sort of color variation. And as an introduction to color logo design, this is a an easier way and a more direct way to color your vectors than to color it within Illustrator or Vector itself, which in some ways is more limited. All right, so what I want, want you to do is to open up Photoshop. This is once you have a finished black shape EPS file and you're gonna create a new file in Photoshop and you are going to make it eight by 10 inches. Now, because my logo is wider than it is tall, I'm going to make it 10 inches wide, 8 inches tall. If your logo is taller than it is wide, then, then you would make it 10 inches tall and 8 inches wide. And I want the resolution to be our standard lab resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch. Background of white, RGB, 8-bit. Here we go. We have an 8 by 10 white piece of paper here. Now, this is very important. Notice how I did not do this. I didn't click on my EPS and say, open it with Photoshop. Because if I do that, it's going to ask me to rasterize my vector file. And I do not ever want to rasterize my vector file. What is rasterizing? 
that turns it into a pixel grid. And if you turn it into a pixel grid, it locks it into a certain resolution, which means that it's made out of squares all of a sudden and no longer clean vectors. And Photoshop is taking a while for me to just show you that thing I don't want you to do. <laughs> so I'll cancel it. Instead, what you do is you drag and drop the EPS file into the Photoshop that you created. So, drag and drop, and it should come in as a smart object. I'm not sure why we're having issues. There we go. So, once you drag your EPS in, don't be concerned, because what you're seeing is a preview here, and it's going to look like it's pixelated. It's not pixelated. It's your vector file, but this is just the preview of it. But we are bringing our vector into a raster format, into a pixel-based format. So I want you to size it. I'm going to hold down Option so it grows from the middle. I'm going to size it like we would print it. So this is an 8x10 piece of paper, an 8x10 mat window. Think of the black as being your mat. How do you want your logo to appear within your mat? And this looks pretty good to me. So then I hit return and I place it. Notice how this is a smart object. So if I try to edit it or erase it, it will ask it to be rasterized. I do not want to rasterize it. And if I zoom in, it will show pixels, but it's going to show the pixels based on the resolution I put in. So this is 350 pixels per inch at 8 by 10 inches. Now to save it, to upload to Canvas, I simply turn off that background layer so it's transparent. And then I say File, Save a Copy. And then I'm going to save this as my assignment for to the desktop. And I want to save it as a PNG file. Remember, that's an online file format that supports transparency. Once I see that on my desktop, then I can start playing with color variations. So here it is on the desktop. If I double click it, it will open in preview. There it is. Now it is no longer a vector. It is a PNG file. So you can see the, the pixels, but it's nice and clean. It's at 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. But you can see how that's different than previewing my EPS file, which is a vector. Because when I zoom in on my EPS file, there are no pixels, no matter how much I zoom in. So really, a major part of this class, digital art, digital imaging, is understanding the difference between a raster image and a vector image. So. Why did we bring this in? Well, because it's now pixel-based, now I'm able to use that PNG that I saved and put it into Canvas. So a vector file can output any variety of resolutions, all from one file. So I'm going to drag that PNG, upload it into Canvas, and now I've got two out of three requirements done for this assignment. I've got my sketches, at least one sketch for the assignment, three sketches for the proving ground, and now I've got my black logo solution as a PNG, All right? Nice and clean. All right, I don't know why that's showing up. So what's next? If we look at the directions, we've done a sketch, we've done the black shape vector that's rasterized for print at eight by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. Now we wanna play with some color variations. 
And the e easiest way to do this is in Photoshop. I'm going to make a duplicate of my vector layer. I'm going to turn on my white background so I can see it. And then I'm going to double click on the layer to open up my layer styles. It's important to know that you can put layer styles onto vectors, onto smart objects, onto type files. So now I can add a color. I can use color overlay and choose a color and an opacity for that color. So what, what does opacity do? Well, under the, the vector that this is modifying is black shape. So if I do 50% opacity of bright red, it's going to be a dark red. And then if I do a gradient overlay, and I make that an opacity of 100%, I have the color overlay on top of it of red. But I can play with a gradient overlay. I kind of like the purple and the black. It's Halloween-y and spooky. I can play with the angle of it. I can play with the scale of it. And I can customize the gradient as much as I want. I can throw green in there. I can throw a blue in there, our campus colors. Oh, the challenges of being a designer where your colors are fluorescent green and bright blue. Multiple challenges there. Okay, so I have that kind of gradient fill. You can see in your layer style, it will give you a little preview of what the styles are. Now if I layer the red on top of that and then maybe take the red down, I get kind of a rainbow. Kind of interesting. But what if I think that that's just kind of too dark overall? Well, why don't I give it a glow on the inside? So you can play with all these layer styles to your heart's content. I can make it a noisy glow. I can increase its size. Give it kind of a vintage 70s look. I can give it a jitter so it's not so even everywhere. Play with its range. Play with its choke. I can give it an outline stroke if I want. I can give it a black stroke on the outside. That's pretty thick. at a high opacity. And notice all of these are being generated from my vector file. I can put that stroke on the inside so it doesn't change my outside shape. And that's kind of nice. It almost looks like stained glass. I can split the difference and put it on the center. But I think for this design, with all these negative space shapes, inside works best for me. I can change the color of the stroke. Maybe a nice dark blue would be nice. Maybe a little thinner. Okay, and then there are some, some other kind of gradient effects, satin is something that you can use with different blending modes. Usually it just kind of darkens it. And it's kind of a, a different shaped, like from the inside out kind of gradient. You can play with its distance. It will do some interesting things. <laughs> it basically gives it this kind of randomized mottled look, depending on what you want. But I can also change the color of the satin. Let's do it with a purple. And change it from multiply to lighten. And I can kind of blend that in a little bit. At a different opacity. Maybe I try soft light. very subtle, maybe pin light. So these are all color variations to play with. I like that, just 
the little hints of 